And with only a week remaining to the opening round of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship at Amaru Park, the race to set the pace continues. All of the major teams and privateers are busy logging development Ks, including new recruit Wayne Gardner. He spent time at Winton this week with Thomas Mazera, getting up to speed in the Holden team Commodores. Yeah, so far good. Um, you know, they're changing the car around, which gives me a chance to see what the car does when it's bad and when it's good, and to give me an idea, you know, which direction that I need to sort of uh, the car set up for me personally. And um, for me, you know, just getting some time in testing is the most important thing. And, you know, my second day out, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it, actually. It's good fun. And, uh, you know, the times are respectable. So I think just a bit more time, a bit more experience, I think it'll improve from there. Larry Perkins, meanwhile, headed to Phillip Island in the trusty Castrol VN Commodore. Perkins will stick with the older model Holden for the early runs of the Shell Nationals before stepping up to the VP V8. We've now got a formula in Australia that uh, a lot more people can relate to. The entrants can actually afford it uh, to, to a much higher degree than they could before. Look, let's face it, those Sierras and uh, Nissan four-wheel drive, uh, you know, off-road vehicles, look, they weren't uh, our normal cars. The Holden Falcon, uh, you can go and buy one, you can prepare one, you can get it on the track, and that's just got to be good. Another driver likely to make his mark on the power circuit is Seven's own Neil Crompton. He's team with Bob Forbes in the new GIO Australia Commodore. In testing at Eastern Creek, Crompton was the quickest of the Holden pilots, while Dick Johnson and John Bauer showed they won't be too far behind Glenn Seaton and the Peter Jackson Falcon when the green flag drops at Amaru. Well, this is probably the most extensive test program we've had uh, since I've been involved in motor racing, and uh, I've certainly got a lot of miles up, and I'm looking forward to actually now racing the car because you never really know until you get to the first event just what the opposition is going to be like because you hear all the rumours about how fast or how slow they're going on certain tracks but you never really know until the, uh, the flag drops and you're away. Seaton obviously remains the man to beat after winning the Winfield Triple Challenge at the Creek last month. Just who has the best package for the Shell Series should be known at Amaru on Saturday when official qualifying gets underway. Don't be surprised if less than a second separates the top ten.